Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're previewing a prototype of Ezra and Nehemiah. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the 5th century BCE. The Judean exiles are finally returning to Jerusalem and they are starting to rebuild. And that's where we come in trying to guide the process to score as many points as possible. I am the yellow player. Today I'll be playing against an automated player uh, represented by these blue pieces and doing my best. And I should say, folks, uh, while this is a solo run-through, don't worry, you're going to get a pretty good idea of what a multiplayer game plays like because this a AI does everything human players do, and uh, including interacting with my stuff and allowing me to interact with their stuff. So, we are set up, ready to go, and there is a wall that needs rebuilding, including gates along the wall. Now, if you're playing solo or two-player, some of the wall has already been rebuilt, but at higher player counts, there'd be even more rubble to be cleared and walls to be rebuilt. Also, there are a whole bunch of scrolls that have been laid out randomly from a whole bunch of additional ones that um, offer all kinds of cool special powers and ways to score points. Also... Um, each player starts with a deck of follower cards and a hand of four. One, two, three, four. Some money, some food, and some followers ready to get to work. And let's see. Oh, also, I should say I'm starting with some gold and some stone that I'll need for rebuilding as well. And what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is play one of these four cards. And they're going to give me access to a lot of different stuff, starting with these banners. There are three different colors of banner, red, blue, and gray. And they represent different areas of the city I can work in. If I'm going to do red banner actions, that's really all about um, donating to the temple and keeping the fire lit. Uh, if I do blue actions, that's more about scribes and getting those special powers as well as talking to all the people of the land, uh, you know, teaching the Torah and stuff like that. And if I'm doing gray-based actions, that's rebuilding the wall. And as you can see in my starting hand, I don't have a lot of gray, so I don't think I'm going to be doing any rebuilding right out of the gate. In fact, my strongest um, color is red. And uh, remember, I said I'm only going to play one card, but I might play a red card, which gives me access to three red banners for you know dealing with the temple and the flame. But on a future turn, I could play this, and then I'd have one, two, three, four, five, so I could do an even stronger action. And a big part of this game is, over several turns, setting yourself up for big actions. So... What do I want to do? You know what? I will go on ahead and I'll... Mm, I was going to say I was going to start playing um, the singer and taking this uh, triple action. But here's the deal. It's not only the color banners I'm getting that give me access to red, gray, or blue actions. I also get access to a trade I can make. And this is turn gold into silver coins. And the thing is, I can do this as much as I want. So I wouldn't necessarily want to make this trade unless I've got a lot of gold on hand so I can make even more silver out of it. But I've only got one gold, which is random. I mean, if I'd had a different setup, I might not have had, I mean, I might have had different starting resources and whatnot. So do I want to go for that? I could go for the musician instead, who instead, uh, you know, doesn't give me as many red banners to do a red action. Does give me some blue banners if I want to set myself up for a bigger blue action later on. Plus, I'm going to draw more cards, so I might get bigger blue actions sooner. And this musician's trade would let me spend silver to get food. And at the end of six rounds, on the seventh round, or the seventh day, as the game uh, thinks of it thematically, when we uh, get to the Sabbath and we have our day of rest, that's when we have to feed everybody. So having a lot of food on hand um, for round seven is a big, big deal. So this could uh, start getting me towards that. You know what, though? I'm going to be a little bit inefficient. I'm still going to go for the singer. This is the one I'm playing. And uh, so there's a nice little breakdown of everything you can do on your turn. You play a character card. And you can see I put in one of these three spots. I'll eventually cover this card with another card later and lose access to these banners, but that's in the future. Right now, I am going to take one main action, and optionally, I can do one auxiliary action, one trader action, and one elder action, in addition to the main action I'm going to do. And then at the end of my turn, I draw a new card to replace the one I played. So, the main actions I'm going to take are going to be all about the temple, because I don't have any blue or um, gray actions to partake in. So, 
What do I do over here? Well, this is giving up the resources that I've got on hand to um, you know, contribute to, to society and score lots of points. Now, whenever you are doing red actions, uh, the first thing you can do is you can bring on another Levite. I start with one, and the more of these I have, the better for being able to do uh, temple and flame actions. Now, I started with six workers ready to go. I'm going to have to feed all of them one food at the end of the week. But right now, if I pay two food, if you zoom in here, you can uh, see it costs me two food to get another Levite who will help me with all future red actions. That costs me two food which I started with three, so I can afford that. And my reward is I'll immediately get one cinder. So I've got another resource. But more importantly, the more Levites I've got, the more actions I can do when triggering red banner actions. And now that's totally optional, but it's well worth doing for a few reasons. I'm stronger at doing red actions now. And I paid two food for them to get them over here, but I do not have to feed them for the rest of the game now. If I just kept this worker at my side doing other stuff like mercantile actions or farming actions, I would ultimately have had to pay them three food um, on the three Sabbaths of the game. But now I've paid them two, and for the rest of the game, they're going to work for me, with, um, but their needs will be met by the food I sent them off with, plus food from the temple. So, I like that. I think that's a win-win for everybody. And so now I've got two Levites, which means I can do two red actions. And those actions are donate resources to the temple or help stoke the flame. And um, I've got three resources on hand that I could do. But remember, I also want to do an auxiliary action, and that might mean one of these, the gold I've got, I might go and turn that into three silver so I've got some cash on hand for later, which means then I've only got two resources to uh, donate to the temple or burn, keep the fire burning. And I think that might make sense. I think, you know what? I am... And you can do all these things out of order. Uh, you can do your main action and then your supplemental actions and whatnot. I'm just kind of going to go on ahead and do my auxiliary action now. I'm going to give up that gold and get three more coins. Three more silver that will come in handy later, especially when we start uh, trying to teach the Torah over here. So that might be my next move, a blue move with all this cash I've got on hand. But we'll see how things go. Okay, so I've done that and I can't, I mean, if I had more gold, I could, I could do the swaps as many times as I want, but I just did it once. My auxiliary action is over. There are, I should say, two auxiliary actions you can choose from. It's either do the trade that your card allowed or upgrade your player board. Because, uh, like say, if I had five cinder on hand, I could get a food and upgrade this so I make more food uh, at the end of the week to feed more people. And there's actually, each time you play, one, two, three, four, five different tiles you can upgrade on your board. And every time you play, you get a different combination of these. So you've got different um, bonuses that are available to you and different upgrades you can chase after. But for my auxiliary action, I didn't um, develop a tile. Instead, I engaged in trade. Alrighty, so I've done my auxiliary, um, but I haven't done my main action yet, which is, again, coming up here to the temple and donating resources, or literally burning resources, wood and um, cinder, to uh, keep the fire burning, which will score me all kinds of benefits as well. So, um, I have, remember... One, two, three um, red banners. That's kind of like a resource I've got. The more red banners I've got, the more powerful my actions are doing these red actions. And because I've got two Levites, I can do two unique actions. If I only had one uh, Levite, I could um, spend my three on one action. But right now, because i got two Levites, I could split these three banners amongst two different Levites. But that's not all, folks. Um, because in addition to... The main action, which I have not done yet. I have done my auxiliary action. Have, or I've done that. But I haven't used a trader, and I haven't used an elder yet. And I can do that at any point in my turn. And I think, before I do my main action, I am going to put my trader, one of these workers of mine, one of these followers, as a trader and or an elder. That's what all these are up here. You can see, I could come here and um, have this person work as a trader to make me two coins and some food, or one resource 
of my choice and some food. Uh, meanwhile, I could have some elders coming over here to give me three more red banners, two blue banners, or two gray banners. And hey, you know what? I've got three red banners. How about I send an elder over here so I've got three more? So now I've got six red banners I can spend on the red action I'm about to do. And I think that's pretty cool. And actually, how about I come over here and do some trade or, you know, send this trader out or merchant out to get some more food because I'm going to need it eventually and to get one more resource. And this resource could be wood, um, cinder or stone. My choice. Uh, I don't have to pay anything for it. I'm basically paying this worker's time to go out and get me these things so that I've got more resources for the main action that I'm about to do. So which resource am I going to take? I think I'll take some more lumber. Um, because lumber is probably the most versatile resource in the game. You can burn it to increase the fire, you can donate it to the temple, and you also use it for rebuilding the walls. Stone is mostly used for rebuilding walls. Cinder is mostly used for keeping the fire going. Um, but wood works in both circumstances. So I think I took a food and some wood. I gave myself three more. So now I've got six red banner points to spend using my two Levites. Although here's an interesting thing. For each Levite I've got, I've got a choice. They can either let me do a red action or they can increase my banners. So right now I've got six total banners to spread across two actions. But if I wanted, I could say, hey, you give me another banner, which means I'd have seven total banners to do in one action action. But that's overkill. Um, I don't need that many banners for one action. I'm going to split my six up and I think I'm going to do it thusly. I am going to spend one of my six total red banners. Uh, if you look over here, it says sped one banner to take a cinder and use it to improve the fire. So this one cinder I've got, I'm spending one of my six banners and having this Levite move the fire up one step. And for doing that, I just got another food. Nice. Can't complain about that. Now, I have got five more banners left to spend, and I've got one more Levite ready to do something. And for that, I am going to look a little bit more closely at the temple. Now, we are playing a one or two player game. At higher player counts, the temple gets a little bit more complex because there's more people um, you know, donating to the temple. But in the solo and two player game, things are a bit more straightforward. Remember, I had five red banners. I am going to spend five red banners. That is the the most I can spend to contribute basically to the top level of the temple. And I could contribute the one stone I've got or the one wood I've got. I will give up the uh, stone because, again, the wood is has the most flexibility. And I'm going to put it here. And there's a little reminder right here that if you donate wood or stone, you get a victory point immediately. If I donated gold, I would have gotten two. But I already got rid of my gold to get more silver in that trade a while ago. So I'm just putting this stone right here. I'm going to get one point. And over here, it always on the left says what you need to spend to do an action. And on the right, what you get, I'm going to get another follower. Just like that. Boom. The more followers you have, the more stuff you can do. Although, the more food you need to feed them. So, right, I got one point for donating that stone. I got one more worker. I also got one food by uh, stoking the fires. So, that wasn't bad at all. But let's see what my opponent is up to. They are going to draw two cards from these decks that have been shuffled up. And where are we going? Well, first of all, they care about the fish gate. If they're going to do any stuff on the wall, this is where the epicenter of their action is going to be. And the first thing they got to decide is, are they going to engage in this trade? Do they have the money to pay? Yes, they do. They've got to pay one silver at the fish gate, which, you know, this might be something I might do. I might play a card that lets me do a trade at the fish gate, and I would have to pay a silver to do that. Now, the fish gate is over here, and, one, and this has yet to be rebuilt. Nobody owns or operates or is the gatekeeper of this gate, which means there's a card for it over here. There it is. And that means the coin that was spent for this trade activity starts accruing. Now, if I'm going to rebuild any gate, I want it to be the fish gate because there's more money on offer for me to rebuild it because more commerce has been done there. Now, what is the trade they're going to do? You saw the trade I did where I just turned um, gold into money. They're spending money to get more workers. If they had five, they would give themselves two workers, but they they don't. They do have two, though. So they're going to give themselves a worker 
just like me, they want to keep their followers up, and they do it by spending silver and gold. It's interesting, the AI doesn't care about the other resources. Everything they care about is silver and gold, uh, just to streamline and keep things done. So, they're done with this. Now, they've got this other card that gives them a priority scheme. They want to do this. If they can't do it, they'll do this. If they can't do it, they can always do this. And so, interestingly, totally coincidentally, what they want to do is make donations to the uh, temple, just like I did. And they can only do it if they have at least one worker, they do, and at least two gold, they do. So uh, that means we're not going to move down to the second or third option. They're going to do this. You saw me do it my way, now you're going to see the AI do it in a slightly different way, but it's mostly the same. And the first thing they can if they or the, if they can is they make another levite they'll always do it if they can but they don't have food on hand so uh, basically every levite they put out there they've got to spend one gold to do it so they've just gotten a second levite me i had to spend food for it they don't they don't have food they spend gold for everything so they've done that and now because they've got two levites they want to do two red actions uh, but their actions are much more simple they're not like trying to figure out how many banners and where they can spend them and so their first Levite says, hey, do I have any gold to contribute? And they do. So they're going to put it in the leftmost available column, left bottom most. So they're just going to come right here. It's like they spent one red banner, let's say. And um, they get two points for that instead of one like I did because you know, gold uh, makes for a better offering, I suppose. And that's what their first Levite did. Now their second Levite would do the same thing if they could, but they're out of gold. So the second thing they'll do is they'll spend a silver to get a gold. Alrighty. And then uh, if they had a third Levite, the third Levite would then say, oh look, I got more gold. I can donate more. But that was it for them. So we both ended up doing the same thing. Um, uh, I ended up getting an extra worker. They got an extra worker. I made a donation. They made a donation. They made more points than me. But I made a lot of money that hopefully I'll be able to use moving forward. Okay, so that's it. Their turns are super simple. Do the trade and then do one of the actions. And all the actions are pretty similar to what humans do. Anyway, speaking of humans, let's come back to me. I forgot to mention, folks, at the end of my turn, I should have drawn another card. I will do so now. And I am going to play one of these cards. And the first thing I need to consider is, what color do I want to leverage? I could do another red action now, and it'd be one, two, three, four, five. I'd have five banners to spend. But... I don't have a lot of resources anymore to send over to the temple or whatnot. So if I want to get some more resources, I should start doing some gray actions to clear up rubble because that is the main way to get more resources. The problem being, I have a very, very weak... I have a, only one gray card. Now is not a good time for me. I could have had cards that say, hey, look, have all kinds of gray actions, but those were not in the cards for me. I mean, they'll come up later, but for now... It is not a good time to go get resources. So, without more resources, I can't really do much more red donations and whatnot. So I think maybe it's time to pivot to a blue action. Alrighty, which means I'll probably want to play either my Scholar or my Soldier, right? Because um, either one of them will give me two blue. And this will also give me a red. This will also give me a gray that I could use on a future turn. Because no matter what's available on the card, you only get to do one red gray, or um, blue main action per turn. So, which of these am I going to choose? Well, I need to think about trade again, right? Uh, so, uh, this is doing trade at the fish gate. This is doing trade at the valley gate. So, if I play this card and do trade at the fish gate, more money will be building up here, making it even more attractive for me to get this gate built so I can get that money back. So I'm kind of keen on this one, especially because, hey, the trade is, after I pay a coin to get through the gate, then I can pay two or six to get one or two more workers, so I've got even more followers. Now, the other trade would be, hey, pay a coin to get through the gate, and then either get one stone or pay two coins to get two stones. I think I'm going to call upon the help of my soldier buddy there. All righty. So now, again... I can do these things in any order. I can do one auxiliary action, which would be upgrading any of these, but I can't, well, I could. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight coins. 
That is enough for me as an auxiliary action to upgrade my storage camp. So right now I can only hold six things. I could upgrade it so I could hold infinite things. Plus I'd get to do a campground action. Plus I'd unlock a bonus ability during Sabbath if my auxiliary action was to upgrade this with all this money. But instead, I could spend all that money getting more followers with that trade action there. And I'm kind of thinking that's the direction I want to go. But doing this upgrade would be fantastic as well. But nope, nope, nope. Let's go on ahead and do this first. And let's... Oh, am I gonna... Am I gonna... Am I gonna... Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm almost broke. But... Oh, and... Oh, seven... Uh, to get through the gate, but that se that seventh goes to this gate that's yet to be built. Now, if I were playing against human players, another human player might have already built the fish gate, in which case I would give that silver to them. But as it is, just accruing, waiting to be collected by whoever builds this gate. And I might not do this in a multiplayer game, because then I, other players would probably go and build that fish gate before I could get to it. But I, I, I think I've got a pretty good shot at pulling it off here. So let's see what happens. So... I um, engaged in trade, spent seven to get two more followers, because I haven't grabbed them yet. Although, man, this is a lot more mouths to feed. And for every one of these I don't feed during Sabbath, I lose two points. So that can be painful. That's why we started with uh, ten points, because we could lose some. All right, so I've done my trade. I haven't done my main action yet. Now, I've got all these people, which means I can do more, um, you know, was it elder and merchant actions? And I think I'm going to send one of them over here to do because I every turn I can do one merchant action and that is get two more coins. Yay! And some more food. Yay! Because I'm gonna need it sooner than later. Alright, so I did that. I could also do an elder action, and the one I would probably choose is hey, give me two more blue uh banners. So that means I'd have one, two, three, four instead of two. And I think I'm going to need to do that. Uh, so, I will do this. And so I've supplemented these two with two more. I've got four banner actions to spend. Blue banner actions. Now, how do I spend them? Well, I do it on a completely different part of the board. The red actions are over here, you know, donating to the temple and keeping the flame lit. The blue actions are over here, sending my people out to become scribes to teach the Torah, and also just traveling amongst the camps of uh, exiles who are returning, um, you know, and spreading the good word and uh, getting some rewards over there as well. So I've got four total blue banners to spend. You can see, four. I could spend four blue, ba uh, blue banners to move through two camps. One, two, which would get me two silver and a blessing, a red blessing. So I could do that, but that's not where I'm going. I'm coming up here, folks. I've got so many people, I want to put one of them to work as a scribe that will give me a power for the rest of the game. And um, remember, I've got four banners. To get in on the ground floor, I need three blue banners. Next level, I need five. Next level, six. Next level, seven. Unfortunately, if I had five, if I could just get one more blue banner, then I would definitely jump up here. But I'd also need three coins to get, unlock one of these powers. But as it is, I've only got four, which means I'm stuck down here on the ground floor where I've got to spend two coins of my three remaining. Um, so, and three of my four blue banners to be able to engage the help of Ezra or Nehemiah or, I am sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce uh, Zerubbabel. All righty. So I am going to get one of those. And now here's an interesting thing. If you're playing a solo or two-player game, there are two dummy characters that represent other players. Because a big part of grabbing these scrolls are, to be able to grab a second level scroll, you have to stand literally on the shoulders of a level one character. So because this character is here, I could grab that scroll or that scroll, but I would have to pay the player who has that character. And you know, once I'm here, myself or another player could jump up to the third level with six blue banners and get those powers. And ultimately, up to the top level where the uh, in-game scoring points are. Anyway, though, it doesn't matter um, because I don't have five banners, so I'm going to come on the ground floor, which means... If these were human players who had already grabbed both of those, then that would be it for me. I would just have to come here. And I'd get Nehemiah on my side. And what does that mean? I grab this card. I immediately get some stone, and I become a better rubble clearer for the rest of the game because I get one permanent gray banner. That's nice. 
But the interesting thing about these uh, dummy uh, scribes, I can bump them out of the way. You cannot do this with human players, but I could kick them out if I wanted to get in good with Ezra or, um, or Zero Bubble instead. Oh, man. I really should have looked up how to pronounce that before I started uh, filming. Zerubbabel? I think that's actually right. I think it's Zerubbabel. So I could get in good with Ezra or Zerubbabel or Nehemiah. And they all do the same basic thing. They make me better at one of the three core colors. Red actions, gray actions, or blue actions. But they also determine what bonus I get. And if I go for Zerubbabel, I will get some more food. And I got a lot of mouths to feed. So I think... Oh, but I don't have a lot of resources to donate. If I'm about to, say, go claim this fish gate, having more gray isn't a bad thing. Let's do it. Let's do that. Let's say I'm just going to move to this space. I spent my two coins. I spent three of my four blue banners, and unfortunately, I wasted one because you use them or lose them. If I had two more, I could move one step through the camps, but I don't. So anyway, I've got Nehemiah. And because I got this in the first week, the game takes place over three weeks, with three, each week being seven days long, or seven rounds long. Um, although one of those rounds is Sabbath, so all we do is like end of round stuff. Uh, because it's in the first week, I only get this reward. If, uh, if nobody had taken Nehemiah for the entire game and I was getting this near the end, I'd get all three rewards. But as it is, I just get some stone. But I'm going to need that stone later on. And then I tuck it under here as a reminder that I have permanently upgraded my operation. Whenever I do a gray action, I've got what's on the cards plus Nehemiah backing me up as well. So if I want to do a gray action, I've got one, two with the soldier and Nehemiah. So hey, maybe my next turn will be to work on the wall. We will see. Okay, but anyway, um, that was my turn because, again, I did engage in trade which is why I'm broke. Um, and I did do some more actions over there, and I've done my main action. Okay, it's time for my buddy to go again. And where are they going? What do they have in mind? Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So what they would like to do is go to the East Gate and do a trade, turning silver into gold. The problem is... They're all out of silver. So if they can't do the main thing, they, the trade they want to do, they've got a fallback, which is move through the camps. So they're going to take one step on the camp, and because they've crossed that line, they get one red blessing. Which in and of itself is no big deal. But the more these blessings go to the right, the more bonuses you unlock. For them and for me, it's, a, it's the same basic idea. So they couldn't do the trade, so they just walked amongst the camps, right? Okay, that's cool. Now, what's their main thing going to be? If they had two or more gold, they would start trying to build a wall. They do not. So they move down to the next one. Hey, if they have zero or one worker, they would get a second worker and some gold. They already have two workers, so they're fine there. So instead, they say, you know what? We're going to move our flame up, and we're going to dig, baby. We're going to clear some rubble. So their flame moves up, and it says they get some food. Now, when they don't care about food. Whenever they get food, they instead get more silver. They Whatever food they got, they sell it, I guess, and turn it into silver. Okay, so they did that, and they're going to dig over at the East Gate. And basically, this is like they did a gray action with enough gray banners that they could... Well, they, they go to the East Gate. And by the way, uh, there's which way is it? It's a little... Oh, it's an arrow going this way. So there's nothing on the East Gate. They'll just go looking until they get to something. Boom. They just picked this stuff up. Um, which if I were doing it, it would cost me gray banners. They've got infinite banners. So they've come over here. But the thing is, they don't want wood and stone. Whenever they would get those, they automatically upgrade them to more gold uh, because they're only working in silver and gold. So that was it for them. All right, uh, let's move on to my third turn. And once again, I forgot at the end of my turn, folks, to draw another card. And boom, here's the big blue. Why didn't I have this card last time? If I'd used the teacher plus my merchant, I could have been on the second level and unlocked those powers. And I still am just terrible for gray. This is ridiculous. How is this happening? Where are all my gray cards? I would like to go and get the fish gate while the getting is good. Um, what do I need to do to get the fish gate? Well, I need to trigger gray banners. I, If I were to play the, uh, the, the gatherer, I would have one gray, two, three. That would be three. Now, there's a little cheat sheet right here saying how many banners you have to spend to clear out rubble. Now, the only rubble at the fish gate is a gold. Hey, I'd like to get a gold. That would cost me all three 
of my gray. And then once that's cleared, if I had any more gray, I could spend three of it to spend two stone and a wood and actually claim the fish gate and get all that silver that's accruing. So really, to clear this out, I need six gray. But I don't have six gray because they're all very shy hiding out at the bottom of the deck. Oh my gosh. All righty. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Well, 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 well. Um, let's, let's see. What can, what can we do then? What can we pull off here? Now, the tricky thing is, because I have not upgraded any of my actions on my main board, I have run out of merchant actions I could do. I've got more people to do more merchant actions, but there aren't any there because I haven't upgraded. I do have this. I could do an elder action to get me two more gray. Then I would have one, two, three, four, five. But remember, I need six. I need six to be able to do it. So now is not the time. Hmm. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Well, and I don't I still don't want to do red actions because again, red actions need resources, and I don't have that many. So let's go on ahead and bring the teacher into play anyway. Now I could cover up one of these, but there's no reason to do it. Eventually I'm gonna to have to cover up all three of the level ones. But if all I were to do to cover one up, I'm giving up other banners before I need to. Let's go, let's do another blue action, right? And this one's gonna be a bit bigger. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and uh, which is better than last time when I only had four. But unfortunately, I've already sent this out. All right, I haven't sent you out yet. So what am I going to do? Well, first off, I can engage in trade again. Uh, and as many times as I want, I can give up food to get silver. And I'm going to need some silver this time, folks, in a big way. Because with those five blue banners, well, I can come back up here now and I can get to the second level. I can start unlocking permanent special abilities that will be awesome. That will be awesome possum. But I've got the five blue banners, but I need three coins and I've only got one. So am I going to am I going to sell some of my food to get some more silver so that I can get one of these uh, upgraded scribe slots. Now remember, there's two things that I can spend my blue banners on. Scribes, which you saw me do before, and moving around between the camps. If I were to spend four blue banners, I would get to move two steps. One, two, and that would give me two coins. But then I'd only have one blue banner left, which wouldn't be enough up here. So, I can't get any money over here to help me. So I think, once again, I'm going to engage in trade. I've got four, got four food. Do I just spend all of it and make eight money? I'm running out of time, folks. We're halfway through the first week. And if I'm totally out of food, oh, the it will be painful. It will be very, very painful if I can't feed everybody. All right, I'm going to hedge my bets a little bit. I'm only going to spend three and get um, six, six. Six coins. All right, so here's a bag of five and one more. All right, so I'm rich. I, I should be good for silver for a while. So that was me engaging in trade. And remember, I could do these in any order I want. Uh, it's just it was good to get this trade out of the way. Now I could come over here and give myself some more. I'm not going to bother with that. But now I've got five blue banners: one, two, three, four, five. As I can't activate that again, say la vie. And I'm going to spend uh, those five banners plus three silver coins to get onto the second level. All righty. And um, which one am I going to take? I've got four to choose from. They're all awesome. And oh, by the way, since I'm the first one to get up on the second level, I get some food. Can't complain about that. Also, there's a reminder that at the end of the game, I'm going to get two points. I'm going to get one point for this scribe. And at the end of the game, I'm going to get two points for the scribe I'm about to put up here. Right. So while thinking about which power, there's one big consideration. If I come here... Then I'm standing on the shoulder of this one who got in good with Ezra, which means I'll have to pay an extra coin to the supply. If it were a human player, it'd be to their supply. If I come over here, I got to play to supply. Um, but hey, I get another point for going to that spot. But if I come here or here, I can basically pay myself. So I think I'm really wanting to focus on just those two. 
but those other ones are good too. Oh my gosh, folks, which one am I going to choose? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. If you want to find out though, here's what you can do, folks. You can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough because I'm going to finish this week and I'm going to see if I starve. Um, and uh, you can come along for the ride. There should be some more twists and turns. Plus, I am going to get that fish gate. Mark my words. Now, instead, if you just want to hear what Jen and I thought of the game, again, you can follow the links down in the show notes or hit the eye in the top right corner screen to go to final thoughts. It's your choice in five, four, three, two, one.